So in this video, I'm gonna be going over state rankings and why they are completely useless as far as I'm concerned. Okay, I was ranked in the state when I was in high school and I have a little bit of history with this. So this is how I understand it and this is how I learned it. This is how it was like five years ago. So it might've changed, but this is how it worked when I was in high school, in Florida at least. Before we get into this, I post a new video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30 p.m. Check out my premieres, I answer all your guys' questions. Uh, there's only like 30 to 35 people there usually, so the odds of me answering your question are pretty high. But first things first, as far as state rankings go, you guys have to understand, before you understand why it's worthless, you guys have to understand how they're made, okay? The person who actually writes out the rankings, like first to last, is it's like usually one dude and he like he's a volunteer he volunteers to do this you know what i mean he doesn't get paid he's not like so he doesn't have any he doesn't have to have any real credentials he just has to be on the board that's who actually makes it but but the way he hears about you actually is from your coach you know what i mean so this dude makes all the rankings and he gets calls like every, like all week or every week and throughout the week about how different schools and different kids did like at tournaments and who they beat, right? Your coach knows in the beginning of the year, like when he's signing up for all the tournaments, he knows what kind of competition is gonna be there, who's gonna be there, their coach, how they did last year, the kids they graduated, the kids that they kept this year. You know what I mean? Your coach for the most part knows all of this and your ranking is determined on how prestigious the tournament you go to is and how difficult your competition is right did they place last year in the, uh, the state tournament did they make it all the way to regionals did they beat someone who placed in the state tournament did they you know what i mean it's like wrestling math doesn't really make sense it's all really arbitrary so let's say you have someone in your weight class who placed fifth in state okay for whatever reason he went up a he went up a weight class and he seated ninth uh in your weight class in state all right you're not seated at all but you beat him all right, if your coach doesn't call the guy who makes the state rankings, his ranking is gonna stay the same. You know what I mean? His ranking won't change up or down, even though he just took a loss. Your coach has to be diligent in calling this guy. So the rankings are very determined on how enthusiastic your high school coach is for your wrestling team. There could be a kid, and oftentimes there is, a kid who goes to two practices a day, goes to three practices a day, wrestles all summer, goes to multiple camps, conditions every single day, does all the weightlifting off summer. And over the course of one summer, he could go from being completely unranked and unknown to placing at the state tournament, having never been ranked at all, right? Just because his coach doesn't call this guy and like bug him and say, oh look, Johnny went to the Jay Robinson wrestling camp for 28 days, he should be ranked higher. Or he just, uh, he wrestled at Fargo and he's ranked whatever nationally, he should be ranked higher or he beat this kid who's ranked national, he should be ranked higher. You know what I mean? If your coach isn't on the phone doing that, then the odds of you getting ranked higher are pretty slim unless you wrestle in front of this guy or someone who is going to tell this guy. You know what I mean? So if you place third or fourth at all tournaments, even though you could be beating high quality competition, you might not be ranked at all. You know what I mean? Uh, in my county, when I was a front, until my junior year, there was, two brothers who had won states two and three times. You know what I mean? So everyone in their weight class, for the most part, remained unseated in the state tournament. It was like it was like them two from our county and then all the other people from the other counties were from other schools. You know what I mean? Because they whooped everyone else in the like in their weight class so hard that it seemed like there wasn't any competition. You know what I mean? Even though like, let's say they go to a tournament that's in my county and they like, they beat some kid who ends up placing third, right? The kid takes one loss in the tournament and the, it's to this, these two brothers, one of these two brothers who have won the state title two and three times respectively. And maybe you beat really high quality competition to get third, right? Someone who places first at another tournament across the state might be looked at more closely because he placed first against lesser competition. Does that make sense? And his his coach might be on the phone over exaggerating. Oh, you should have seen this match. He whooped him, he died. Like, you know what I mean? 
So there's a lot of variables that go into the actual state ranking. It's not so set in stone as you believe. It's not like the person who's ranked number eight is definitely worse than the person who's ranked number six. A lot of the time, someone who's ranked in the state rankings will lose a match and they won't go up or down in the, they won't go up or down, which is a huge issue. And like, unless you actually get someone whose job and you're willing to pay 60 grand a year to follow the high school state rankings, this isn't gonna get fixed anytime soon. Just take the state rankings with a grain of salt. Know that if they're ranked, that they're like, that it's gonna be a tough match. But if you're willing to put in the work, then you can beat anyone who's ranked. You know what I mean? The, the amount of work that it takes to get ranked in the state is not like an obscene amount. It's not like a crazy amount. You probably just have to dedicate like 10 months of like all your free time to actually getting better at wrestling, watching YouTube videos, practicing wrestling, conditioning, getting stronger, doing push-ups, you know what I mean? Doing all the things that good wrestlers do, eating right, actually going to competitions, going to national competitions, doing all the things that good wrestlers do, it wouldn't, it doesn't take like a crazy amount of time. You know what I mean? Cause I went from zero, I went from JV to being ranked in the state. It wasn't like I made this huge transition. It's just like, it's about the quality of the work you put in. And another thing, oftentimes schools will purposely sandbag their kids. They'll purposely say that their kid's record is worse than it is so that they can artificially get a higher seed. You know what I mean? Cause if I'm not seated, and I get put against the first seed, but I can beat the first seed, my my course to get to first is a lot easier. You know what I mean? That's why they're seeding. They think that the person who seated first is gonna beat the person who seats second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, so they'd rather have those people duke it out on the other side of the bracket. The person who is seated first usually has to wrestle the person who seated fourth and sixth, which are much easier seeds, which are usually much lower quality competition even though like at the highest level, it's all kind of the same thing. If you guys think that video helped you, if you guys liked it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell button so you're notified when I premiere my videos. They premiere every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30 p.m. So stay tuned for those, but until next time, I'll see you guys, peace.